Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today we are discussing a problem that keeps people up at night. Stay tuned. Literally, it is almost one o'clock in the morning and I am up discussing this problem. What is this problem? There are lots of problems that keep people up at night. Why is my baby's diaper not leak proof? I have thoughts for that too. Why is my orifice not accommodating my chunky arm? I have thoughts for that. None of those are this question. How do you distribute add-ins evenly throughout your yarn? Because I don't know about you, but when I want a blend, I want a blend. When you go into a store and you pick up a whatever H&M Angora Merino Mohair Blended Sweater, there is not pooling. You don't pick out the different fibers in plops throughout the sweater. It's all one beautiful blended thing. It's a blend. Seriously, people, blend your stuff if that's what you're going for. That is easier said than done to blend your stuff. Uh, it requires a certain technique. I have thoughts on that technique. <laughs> Hopefully you come to me asking for my advice and opinion. I'm not just throwing it at you. This is like a, a healthy relationship. That's what you get on Spin Weekly. Weird rambly shenanigans about fiber. <laughs> With this, I used the Paradise Fiber of the Month Club Yaktober blended top, which I will leave links to that down below, as well as the Sorry silk that came with it. Obviously, you'll see that in the unboxing that I linked down below. <laughs> but I also pulled some green Sorry silk from a past box. I don't remember which month it is. So I had a full range. Then my husband, I wasn't sure how I wanted to divide it. So he divided the Sorry silks into warm and cool colorways. So one ply is warm and one ply is cool. And what I did was I blended the fiber together. You'll see it in the demo. But then as I applied it, I was able to get a more evenly distributed blend. So basically there was 50% more chance of an add-in hitting each part of the yarn because both plies were coming in. You know, you know what I'm trying to say here? Keeping the warm on one side and the cool on the other side actually cool on this side, warm on this side. I'm getting my mental zones mixed up. <laughs> Doing that helps also evenly distribute the color throughout the entire yarn. So you're always getting a warm and a cool at the same time. And I really found this to be very effective. There are a couple of other ways that I am exploring right now. In real time, I'm spinning the uh, Hanukkah spin along ahead of time so that way you know while I'm traveling it'll still update and I'm exploring that there too. Keep an eye out in future videos because I'll have more insight but I think this is really especially for shorter staple length like a sari silk one of the best ways that I found to do this. This is also a tweed and I wanted to shout out if you're interested in tweeds I have a section in my book about that so I've left links down below so you can get the whole book or just the individual recipe card exploring tweed. So I do have other resources especially I go really in depth on selecting colors and fibers that work together to give that really traditional tweed feel. This is one of them. Uh, I feel like this is a lot more straightforward than some of the ones I mentioned in my book because I was working with a blended top there was a lot of depth already there and then the sari silk brought a lot of depth. I've talked a lot, let's jump into the demo and we'll meet back afterwards.
right, so I hope you found that really uh, enlightening. I want to know what is your favorite way to construct a tweet and or bonus points if you answer both. How do you tackle the consistent blending issue? I feel like this is easier when the two fibers are similar in texture and staple length, but when there's a difference, I think it's maybe not more difficult to blend, but rather more pronounced that the blending is potentially spotty. I'm really interested in your insight and wisdom on the subject. <laughs> like I said, this, this keeps me up at night, yo. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If you like these kind of shenanigans and want to make sure you don't miss out on any of our future goodness, hit the subscribe button. And as per usual, this video is brought to you by viewers like you. I love the PBS slogan. I'm just going to have to steal it. This Spin Weekly episode is brought to you by spinners like you through Patreon. Check out my Patreon following the links down below in return for awesome goodness. But mostly, most importantly, more of these videos always for you. One of the big things I do for my Patreon people is I offer the uncut versions of spins. So if you want to see this in real time, it takes a really long time. The footage is long. Usually they're like 45 minutes long. So if that's something that interests you, uh, Patreon is your place. However, if you cannot subscribe, don't feel the need to apologize. There's nothing to be sorry for. I've gotten a few apologies videos for you guys. You can send me love by answering all my questions in multiple paragraphs. <laughs> ah, so I will see you guys next time. 